Hi guys, this is section 8.5, which is the division properties of exponents. Uh, if you remember the previous chapters or sections, it was multiplication properties. So now we're dealing with division if we have x on the top and the bottom. Okay, if you remember with the multiplication, we added the exponents. Now that we're dividing, we're going to subtract the exponents, but I'll show you the long way first so you can understand why, and then I'll show you the shortcut. If I have x to the fourth divided by x squared, the long way of doing it is to write it out four times and then over x squared, which is x times x two times. Anything divided by itself cancels out because it becomes 1. And if you notice, I have two x's on the top. So my answer would be x squared over 1 or just x squared. Okay. The long way of doing I'm sorry, the shortcut way of doing it is if I have this 4 over 2, I can just minus 2 minus 2 to make this x to the 0 on the bottom. And x to the 0 becomes 1. And then 4 minus 2 is 2. And I'm left with x squared over 1, which is just x squared. So again, this is the long way of doing it. The shortcut is just showing it up here when you subtract it. Okay. In this example here, I have more on the bottom. So if you notice, I'll go, if I wrote it out the long way, I would get 3 on the top, 5 on the bottom. When I cancel these out, I'm left with 2 x's on the bottom. So my answer would be 1 over x squared instead of x squared over 1. Okay, I have two more on the bottom because I have three on the top, five on the bottom. If I took three away each, that's what happens. Okay, another way of doing it, instead of always subtracting the bottom, so in this case, if I minus 5 and minus 5 to make this x to the 0, I would get x to the negative 2 on the top and over 1 because x to the 0 is 1. And then if you remember, when you have a negative, you move it down, and you're left with 1 over x squared. Same thing. Okay, you get the same answer. But here's a shorter way of doing that one. Instead of always minusing the bottom, you can zero out the smaller number. So if I have 3 on the top, 5 on the bottom, I can actually just minus 3 from the top and bottom. And this x to the 3 minus 3 is x to the 0, which is 1. And then 5 minus 3 is 2, 1 over x squared. And I get the same answer as that. Okay, so the long way is writing them out. Shortcut is doing it this way. You can zero out either one, whichever is the smaller of the numbers. In this case, the 2 was on the bottom, so I minus 2. In this case, the 3 was on the top, so I just minus the 3. Okay, and I'll show you what happens when we deal with negative numbers here. So in this case, I have x on top and bottom and y on the top and bottom. So I need to simplify that. If I have x squared on the top and x to the fourth on the bottom, I want to zero out the top number because it's smaller. So I'm going to minus 2 from both of those. And then if I have y to the negative 3 and y to the 5 on the bottom, in order to zero out one of the exponents, I could just add 3 here and add 3 here to the bottom. So now when I'm looking at the top, x to the 0, y to the 0 just becomes 1. And then x to the 4 minus 2 is x squared. And y to the 5 plus 3 is y to the Another way of thinking it is y to the negative 3, if I moved it down to the bottom, I add 3 to the 5. So there's my answer, 1 over x squared y to the e. It's a little trickier one. I have 3, now I have x, y, and z on the top and bottom. So I have x to the 3 and x to the 5. If I read, I'd minus the 3 from the top and bottom to 0 this one out. Now I have two negatives. I have y to the negative 1 and y to the negative 5. You could zero out either one of them. But I notice if I plus 5 to the top and bottom, that zeroes the bottom one out. But it leaves me with a positive. Negative 1 plus 5 is a positive 4. Okay. And then I have a z and a z to the negative 2. Again, there's an invisible 1 there. So if I zero out, I want to zero out the negative 1. I'm sorry, the negative exponent, not negative 1, the negative exponent. So I'm going to plus 2 here, and I'm going to plus 2 there. So this one got zeroed out, this one got zeroed out, and this one got zeroed out as far as exponents. And so now I'm left with y to the fourth power, z to the third power, over x to the second power. Okay. The next part that we're going to learn is if I have um, a fraction in a parentheses, okay, and it has a power on the outside, all you do is distribute the exponent 
to whatever is inside. So there's an invisible one. There's an invisible one. Again, power to a power. When I do that, it just becomes x to the third over y to the third. On this one, when I distribute this into both of these, actually all four of them, I get 2 squared, which is 4, x squared, over 3 squared, which is 9, y squared. All you do is distribute it, that 2 in, that square, into each one of those. Okay. So here's another one. If I take this in here, on the top I'm going to get 9x to the fourth. And then on the bottom, when I distribute this in, I get 4 squared, which is 16. And then y to the 5 times 2 is 10 pi. Oops. Notice you can't see that. There it is. <laughs> okay. And here's a tricky one. If I distribute this negative, the 2 into the negative 2 in the x, I want to make sure if there's a negative in here, I put parentheses around the negative 2. And the reason why is if I wrote this out the long way, because it's squared, I could say negative 2x over y times negative 2x over y. Negative 2 times a negative 2 becomes 4x squared over y squared. Okay, so it becomes a positive 4. So when I distribute this 2 in and there's a negative inside of the parentheses, Make sure you put the parentheses here, so it's negative 2 in parentheses squared, which is 4x squared over, and when I drop this down there, it becomes to the y squared. So it's 4x squared over y squared. Okay? The next examples I wanted to show you is if I have negative exponents. The easiest, instead of distributing in a negative exponent, what you should do is just flip it around. So instead of 2 over 3, it becomes 3 over 2. And then this exponent becomes a positive 1. So it just becomes, whenever you have a negative exponent, you flip whatever is inside of the parentheses and change it to a positive exponent. And if it's to the 1 power, you can actually just drop it off. And the answer would be 3 over 2. Okay. So if I again, if I have a negative 2 here, what I want to do is flip it over, so 3 over 2, change it, and change this negative to a positive 2. And now I distribute it in, and I get 3 squared over 2 squared, which is 9 over 4. Okay. Same thing here. When you flip it, you want to make sure you flip it and keep it the same. So if I flip it, I get 4y over 3x squared leave the parentheses, and change this negative 2 to a positive 2. And now I distribute it in. And I get 16y squared over, and when I distribute this way, 9x to the fourth. Okay. Now I have a big ugly problem here. If I were you, and they have x and y's on the top and bottom in the parentheses, um, simplify the parentheses before you distribute the exponent. So simplify this before you distribute it or even flip it. Okay, uh, because again, 24 squared, I don't think you know what that is off the top of your head. 36 squared, I don't think you know. But if we can simplify it down, then we can do this without a calculator. Okay, so for 24 over 36, if I simplify and divide by 12, I get 2 over 3. My x is I have negative 2 and 5, so I'm going to plus 2. So I'm going to get x to the 7th on the top. For the y's, I have negative 4 on top and positive 2 on the bottom, so I'm going to plus 4, plus 4. That zeroes that one out. And so now I'm left with y to the 6 on the bottom, all to the, and I'll make it smaller, to the negative 2 power. So now I have a way simplified. So because this is a negative 2, I'm going to flip it over and go 3y to the 6 over 2x to the 7 and change the negative 2 to a positive 2. And now I'm going to distribute this 2 into everything, and I get 9y to the 12 over 4x to the 14. 
and you didn't even need a calculator for that. Okay, so again, I'll say it again. Simplify the parentheses before you distribute your exponents in. If you have x on top and bottom, simplify. If you have y on top and bottom, simplify. In this case, because I only have x on the top and the y on the bottom, there's nothing to simplify. I can just, it's already simplified, I can just distribute it in after I flip it. Okay, so simplify the parentheses. The last example I have over here is division. So we did the multiplication once, and it's scientific notation. So if they have it this way, the easiest thing to do is split it down like this, and then you just think of it as two fractions. So 6 divided by 3 is 2 times 10 to the, and if I have 9 on the top, 4 on the bottom, I'm going to minus 4, minus 4, and I get 10 to the fifth power. And there's your answer, 2 times 10 to the fifth power. Okay? On this one here, same thing, if I split it down here, 9 divided by 3 is 3 times 10 to the, and if you notice 5 and 8, in the other problems we subtracted whichever one is smaller. Whenever you do scientific notation, you have to zero out the bottom. Okay, so in this case I zeroed out the bottom, in this case I need to zero out the bottom. Okay, because you, can, you cannot have a fraction for scientific notation. So zero this out, and I'm, at 10, I'm left with 10 to the negative 3 power. And there's your answer, 3 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay? Here's a couple more quick examples. If I have 4 divided by 8, that equals to 0.5 times 10 to the, and I need to zero this one out again. So I'm going to plus 5, and then negative 3 plus 5 is 2. But that's not scientific notation yet. Remember, we need to move this over. So if I go this way, I'm going bigger 1. So I need to go smaller 1, if you remember that. So I get 5 times 10 to the 1 power. Okay. And my last example here, 3 divided by 6 is 0.5 again, times 10 to the, and I need to zero at the bottom, and it becomes negative 6 power because negative 8 plus 2, and again I need to my, move the decimal, so I'm going to plus 1 here, minus 1 there, so I get 5 times 10 to the negative 7 power. Okay, that's section 8.5. Hope you all have a great day.